Peepaw, what you got under that blast shield? I've got a Burgess spindle drive. I replaced a shorted IGBT power module and repaired a blown gate firing channel. <laughs> so I got to cover it up. If things go badly, uh, my blast shield will contain the explosion. <laughs> Hey, it's looking pretty good. I think we fixed it. We had good U to V waveforms on the oscilloscope. Let's go ahead and remove our blast shield. Since we didn't have an explosion, we're good to go. <laughs> All right. I like to test the drive partially disassembled, and that way if uh, it still doesn't work, I don't have to take it back apart to uh, further troubleshoot it. Here we're going to look at the U, V, and W waveforms when we enable the drive to run. But give me a little bit to move the camera over to the front of the oscilloscope so we can look at those U, V, and W waveforms. Here, we've been able to drive to run. And there's the U and V waveforms. That's some good looking PWM right there. Good high side and low side firing on U to V. That's nice. Now, as long as the other waveforms look good, U to W and V to W, we'll be good to go. Oh yeah, look at that. Here's U to W. Looks exactly like V to U to V. Isn't that nice? We'll spread that time out a little bit and look at the waveforms that fire that motor. Nice. Okay, here we're going to look at V to W. It looks the same. That's what we want. U to V, U to W, and V to W all looking the same. When they all look the same, we have a good running drive. Nice. We fixed it. <laughs> all right. Now, shortly here, we'll load that drive down. Here we have three banks or six each light bulbs configured in a Y configuration. And we're going to connect that to the U, V, and W terminals of that Burgess spindle drive.
That's good. That's good. The intensity of the light bulbs are all equal for U, V, and W. That's what we want right there. Here's the front panel of the drive. Showing the frequency that that drive is running. The motor end. And we can go from zero to 600 hertz on this drive right here. <laughs> That's what it's programmed for. Man, that is running. <laughs> it is running right there. 600 hertz. Shoo-wee! <laughs> nice. Now, at the end of the video, I'll show you the hookups to make this drive go. So, stay with us. Evening all, we've made it to the house. <laughs> Here's the control connections on the Burgess spindle drive ACM 3K 40110H. On terminals 16, 15, and 14, we have clockwise direction, counterclockwise direction, and common. When I close terminal 16 to terminal 14 common with this switch, the drive will run in the clockwise direction. Now, terminal 15, the counterclockwise direction on this drive had no effect. We're a spindle drive. Spindles are meant to cut, and we don't need to go in the reverse direction when we're cutting. We want to go in one direction only, so that drive was programmed to only operate when I closed the clockwise terminal 16 to common terminal 14. Now, down here we have an enable, uh, and you jump that to common pin 10. This enable sets that drive up to run. If this is not jumped, either via a switch or our jumper wire, the drive LCD says off. And when you close that terminal, that enable pin 11, terminal 11 to 10, and close this switch right here, the LCD shows the frequency based upon this potentiometer on terminals 9, 8, and 7. Now I've had some Burgess drives in the shop where I had to put 5 volts into pin 11 from an external power supply and 
5 volts into terminal 16 or terminal 15 from an external power supply with the power supplies grounds connected to common 14 and common 10. The way to tell whether you can just use a switch or an external power supply is you take your black lead on your meter and put it on terminal 10 and take your red lead and put it on terminal 11. If you already see 5 volts right there between these two pins, between these two terminals, all you have to do is jump it out. If you see 0 volts here on terminal 11, reference to terminal 10, you have to put an external 5 volts into that uh, control input. The same up here. Put your black lead on terminal 14 common and put your red lead on 16 and 15. 16 or 15. And if you see 5 volts up here, all you have to do is jump it out with the switch. But if you see 0 volts up here on 16 or 15, you have to put an external DC voltage of 5 volts into those two inputs. Let's take a look at the power connections now. L1, L2, and L3, and UV and W. Now here's the power terminal. We have UVW, protective earth, protective earth, bus ground, bus plus, regenerative break and resistor connection, protective earth, L3, L2, and L1. Now, L1, L2, and L3, according to the data plate on the drive, is 400 volts AC, three phase, to 460 volts AC, three phase. Now, our transformer, uh, the closest we can get to 400 volts AC, is 380 volts AC, and that drive powered up good under, under uh, that voltage, 380 volts AC, three phase connected to L1, L2, and L3. Up here, we have UV and W. I'm using 6 each light bulb bank, 3 banks of 6 each light bulbs wired in Y configuration. You know how to do a doggone vi- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> getting carried away there didn't mean to cuss I should do a video on this light bulb bank all by itself now this light bulb bank is not an original idea simulated loads have been around as long as people have been trying to figure out electronics <laughs> we have simulations for everything and uh, this bank of light bulbs wired in Y configuration simulates a spindle motor uh, that's really nice it did it makes it a lot easier uh, when you're troubleshooting things with this light bulb bank right here instead of using an actual motor. Now, let me tell you something. If you've got an actual motor, that's wonderful because you can dynamically test that IGBT power module. You can dynamically test that drive under real world conditions with the actual motor. But I ain't got a spindle motor that'll run from 0 to 600 hertz at 380 volts AC. I don't have it. But I do have that light bulb bank, and that's just as good. I like to look at UV and W unloaded, uh, like you saw in the video, before I connect any kind of load, either simulated or, or, or real motor to UV and W. I like to look at and make sure because if 
say for instance our U is not firing correctly and V and W are, well that motor is going to bounce all over the world. <laughs> You're going to be diving for the power switch to turn that thing off <laughs> while well, that motor is dancing all over the floor and falling off the table. <laughs> so look at UV and W before you put anything out there, especially a real motor. The light bulb back here, it don't care. Uh, it just, you would see one phase of the light bulbs dimmer than the other two phases if we were missing a leg. But a motor, <laughs> a motor would, oh man, you'd be diving for the power switch to turn that chaos off. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I'm getting long winded and it's getting late. We got to get up and go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> oh, wait. No. No. That's right. Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm taking the day off. <laughs> well, we see you the following day then. Folks, I really appreciate it when you come over. I always enjoy it when folks are wanting to learn things like this. Electronics is hard sometimes. And sometimes it's not and it's a lot of fun. If you get into this line of work where you go and fix things, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy your life. Well, okay. We'll see you next time.